Hi there, good girls here. Welcome to this tutorial on Gaia and terrain pathfinding. I will be using A-star pathfinding for this tutorial. I've tried a few pathfinding assets and A-star pathfinding is the only pathfinding I found that actually works on the Gaia default size terrain. I found it through Adam Goodrich's curated list of assets. So I already created the terrain in this project with deep ridges to clearly show the pathfinding and I added aquas water to it. Note that the water Y coordinate is set to 50. So where to get the pathfinding solution? Go to the aarongrenberg.com website. There you will find the A-star pathfinding project and in the download section you can get it get a free version. The paid version in the asset store has more features, however the free version is an ideal way to test before you buy. I also imported a character with animation into the project. The character has two scripts from A-star included, the Seeker script and the modified A-star pathfinding script. It also contains a character controller and a rigid body component. I also included an animator from the Unity example on NavMesh animation. You can download it from the Unity 3D site. So let's start. First we need to set the terrain layer to terrain. Next we are going to add the A-star script to an empty game object in the scene at 000. Create the empty game object, add the A-star path.cs script to the object. If you get that prompt set JavaScript to no, select the grid graph and update the settings to reflect the terrain. Width depth to 800, node size to 2.5, center to 0, 50.1 and 0, max slope to 45, ray length to 1000 and mask to terrain the layer we set before. Why is this center Y set to 50.01? Well, we're changing the A-star box to be just above a sea level, so all water basically prevents movement. You may need to play a little with these settings to make sure you get the desired outcome. Some of the properties of the A-star component are limited because of the free version. So for example the thread count is kept at 1 and optimization settings cannot be changed. Now hit the scan button. You will see the grid appear on top of the terrain. Once you are ready with the graph, save it to a file which can be cached. Hit the save to file button and store the cache file into the project. For a better performance during editing, you can switch off the show graphs. It will take a while before it appears in the project and then add the cache file to the cache startup and check that box.
So now we have the basics ready and it's time to add the animated character. Drop the night prefab in the scene and add a sphere renamed target just around the corner. We want the knight to walk around this high ground instead of crossing it directly. The maximum slope should prevent this from happening. I am parenting the main camera to the knight and zoom in so the knight is visible in the scene at all times. As you will see in more detail when the scene runs, I use a RTS style selection around the character. It is using a projector with a special shader and I will add the link to the source by Jeff Zimmer. Next, run the scene. Note that the path isn't fully optimized, however we do see the knight rounding the corner properly instead of climbing the ridge immediately. Yes, the camera is a bit nervous, but that's partly due to the parenting it to the night. So while we are fast forwarding now, I didn't add Megasplat to this terrain, but I did in my VR project. If you enable tessellation, you will see the character sometimes sink into the terrain to his knees or elbows. I will see if I can do another short tutorial on that since I've seen some posts in Jason Booth's Megasplat forum which indicates this can be resolved. Also one of his tutorial scenes does show it's possible. Ok, how does the knight move? If we select the knight you will see a few scripts added. Seeker from A star Pathfinding, AI Dynamic Object, which is actually a copy of A star Pathfinding script with some changes for the animation, a character controller and a rigid body. It's the AI Dynamic Object script which is key for this demo. If we take a look at the script, I added a new AI script which is basically the same as the AI path included in the package with some extensions to support animation. The awake method where I get the reference to the animator component. The update method where I call the update animations method. And the update animations method, which is a slightly modified version from the Unity script, which is in the example page I showed earlier. If we look at the animation controller, that again is from the Unity NavMesh example. Ok, that's today's video and I hope you enjoyed it. If so, please vote it up and I'm off to create the next video.